A compelling and damaging storm was prevailing within the band, Gary having recognized the clouds on the horizon and understood their catechetical consequence. Larry burns the clarinet and sax aficionado, having left after a dispute over Glenn and Gary's booking travel expenses to Texas, and a another transpiration. The band's accomplished guitar and tenor sax mentor, Jerry Willis, having succumbed to full-time employment with Dumco Drilling Equipment Manufacturing Company, a prominent oil industry as a machinist, and with this full-time commitment, could only avail himself for Friday night and Saturday engagements. Then there was the most distressing event, drummer Glenn Froman, Gary's closest friend and confidant, the person who introduced the pianist to the music profession would be returning to Indiana. Gary's thoughts of collected logic would reign, prioritization would have to be instituted, consternation kept in check. First things first, an inquiry to Dell City Music's friend and owner, Bob Woods about the availabilities of drummers. Bob acknowledging he was aware of a drummer named Dewey Moore, looking for a job, having heard he was good, but knowing him in name only. Gary placing a phone call, arranging to meet Dewey at his trailer park residence in Midwest City. On arrival, Gary discovering the drummer had some forethought, having assembled his trap set for a percussion demonstration, his expertise would complement the band. The first engagement with the new drummer was at the officers club at Tinker Air Force Base in Midwest City, Dewey introducing his wife Elaine. Gary confident he made the right decision in hiring the Midwest City musician, the second obstacle still remained, a revision of the band's schedule would have to be undertaken, Jerry's limited to playing weekends presented a major problem, to book weekdays. Another guitar player would have to be found. For the time being, the weekend engagements would have to suffice. The band playing their closing song, concluding the weekend at the Broadway Club, in the basement expanse of the 14-story Broadway Towers building, on East Broadway in Enid. With the band equipment stowed in Gary's car, the pianist, and Jerry having agreed to retrieve drummer Dewey, having left with a waitress to see her home, asking to be picked up at her apartment on their way out of town. The two arriving at the apartment, Gary announcing their arrival with a brief sounding of the horn, an expectation that the percussionist would appear, but after waiting a reasonable time, they decided to make an inquiry, knocking on the door. The door opening, both witnessing the waitress in a state of havoc, flustered and upset, screaming that Dewey had forced himself on her and was physically attacked. Gary remained silent listening to the accusations, and her exclamatory notice that if he was ever in her presence again either here or at work she would notify the police and press charges of attempted rape upon leaving the scene gary was perplexed the drummer was silent about the accusations and with the waitress indictment gary was left with no other alternative but to inform dewey george moore his services would no longer be needed. The Oklahoma State Fair having arrived, Gary approaching the Hammond organ display in the large exposition building. Seated at the console of the mammoth circular keyboard was Larry Flowers, Gary well acquainted with the Hammond organ franchise dealer. The displayed Hammond organ, its boisterous sound augmenting the building structure with its tonal ascendancy. Gary getting closer, noticing a familiar sound, the total rhythmic audio of a live percussionist, a drummer. This was not the synthetic rhythm sound that normally accompanied an organ, but the actual audio of a sideman, he could hear the snare, tom-tom, bass drum, and hi-hats and cymbals. Gary was intrigued. Larry pointing to what resembled a control box latched to the side of the organ bench, 
explaining, it was a Chamberlain rhythm mate, the electronic accessory providing continuous loop tape recordings of a live drummer. 14 taped rhythms being performed, with three variations for each, with the volume and speed control, producing Latin, swing, shuffle, rock and roll, jazz, waltz, two-step, brushes, and other rhythmic recorded venues, played through an amp. The discovery and exhibition of the Chamberlain rhythm mate providing an insight to the musician's admonition about the future, and a possible solution to his band dilemma. The pianist giving serious thought, with Glenn gone, and Jerry only available on weekends, maybe it was time to tailor his piano, from the bandstand to a more congeal solitary format, the piano bar. A decision to enter a new musical realm would be a major step, the demanding presence and expectation of a solo entertainment performer was a venue he had never experienced. But every new horizon begins with the start of a new day.